Welcome to Naraisai Technologies. This is Ramchandar. In this video, I am going to discussing about what is method overloading and programs. See, in the last video, I did talk about polymorphism. Okay, continues of that uh, topic only. I am discussing about uh, method overloading. Mainly to developing polymorphism concept in Java language, mainly we have two types of techniques for developing polymorphism concept in Java language. We have two techniques, one is method overloading, another one is method overriding, method overloading, another one is method overriding. There are two approaches or there are two techniques to develop polymorphism in Java language. So, the first approach is what is method overloading and how to develop the method overloading concept in Java language. It is a damn easy thing. Method overloading means over means more than one. If any method which is existing within the same class of multiple times with a different parameter is called method overriding. What is that? The same method, the same method is existing multiple times with different parameters within the same class, within the same class is called method overloading, method overloading. Now, here we need to concentrate on one word that is different parameters. So, how to differentiate one method to another method with the help of parameters means again there are three approaches based on the parameters only we can able to differentiate one method to another method within the same class. So, here there are three approaches to differentiate the methods by using parameters. The first one is number of parameters and the second one is type of parameters. Second one is type of parameters and the third one is order or place of parameters, order or place of parameters. There are three main approaches, there are mainly three approaches, one is number of parameters, another one is type of parameters and the last one is order or place of parameters. So, here let me write somewhat examples related to skeleton code related to method overloading. So, here I am telling like within the same class writing multiple methods within the same class. So, let me take one class name like MO. Now, I am taking one method. Now, I am taking one method void m1 method. Void m1 method. Yes. So, writing the same method how many times? More than one time. Nothing but multiple times. Void m1. If I am writing like this, definitely, definitely it will giving what your error. The reason is what we learn about the multi method overriding concept, writing the same method multiple times. Yes, here I am writing M1 method, here is also I am writing M1 method. But here the problem is, here the problem is what are parameters. So, how many parameters are there within the M1 method? 0. Here, how many methods, how many parameters are there in the second M1 method? 0. So, both the methods are what? Duplicate method. So, compiler will giving one error message like uh, method m1 already defined. So, this type of syntax is what here? Invalid syntax. Then what is the exact method overriding syntax? Very simple. See class mo and here I am writing like one method, one variable. What is that in tx? Writing same method. What is the method name? m1. Here also method name m1. Writing the same method. 
how many times multiple times here uh, multiple times two times I am writing with the main important point is we need to consider this one with different parameters. So, here how many parameters do we have in the M1 method in this M1 method 0 here how many parameters we have 1 is 0 equal to 1 no that means both the methods are what the different. So, writing the same method multiple times with different parameters within the same class we can called as method overriding. So, how to differentiate one method to another method I told you like already we have a three approaches like number of parameters, type of parameters as well as what order or place of parameters. So, now this thing is comes under number of parameters category here number of parameters are 0 here 1 0 is not equal to 1. So, the methods are what different if you take if you take one more syntax now here my method name is m o sorry m 1 and how many parameters are there one parameter int x and here how many parameters do we have here I have string y or string s whatever it may be. So, in the first m 1 method we have parameters like 1 in the second m 1 method we have parameters like again 1. So, according to first rule number of parameters rule both the m 1 methods are what duplicate methods, but we have a second approach what is the second approach the second approach is what type of parameters. So, what is the parameter type of first m 1 method that is int what is the second m 1 method x parameter type is string is string equal to int no. So, int is differently definitely different from what your string the both the parameters are different we can consider both these two methods are what are different methods int of int parameter of m 1 string parameter of m 1 both are what are different methods. So, these two methods are what are valid methods no doubt about that ok. Now, observe guys let me take some other methods like a class a in the class a I have some methods like a void m 1 void m 1 here I am taking parameters like here I am taking parameters like int x int x string y and let me take same parameters one more time. So, let me take same parameters means what here number of parameters here I am taking like string y as well as int x. Now, if you observe here this m 1 method contains how many parameters 2 second m 1 method contains how many parameters here 2 only. So, both the methods are what according to number of parameters rule both the methods are duplicate and what type of parameters it have so, int comma int comma what is that int comma string and here is also we have what int comma string only here is also type of parameters are what int comma string itself, but according to third rule what is the third rule order or place of parameters order or place of parameter means what is the first parameter type here first parameter type is int here first parameter type is what here here first parameter type is here first parameter type is what here string. So, here first parameter int here first parameter is string both are same or different definitely different parameters if the parameters are different we can consider both the methods are what here different methods. So, we have these three types of uh, syntaxes in method overloading concept method overloading means writing the same method multiple times with a different parameter within the same class with uh, uh, different parameters is called method overloading. We can differentiate the one method to another method with the support of the parameter by using the following three rules one is uh, number of parameters second one is type of parameters and third one is what here order of parameters understand. So, this is what small introduction related to method overloading concept. Now, let me do some programming on top of method overloading. So, so, let me start programming here notepad here I am taking like a method overloading method overloading yes. Now, I am writing one method like public and void and m 1 method public void m 1 method 
good and here I have a one method here I have one method so first let me write one small let me write one small println statement system dot out dot println this is what is that zero argument method this is zero argument method here we need to write zero now let me write the same method one more time let me write the same method one more time and uh, one more thing is uh, let me copy this statement class name control c s yes, control v dot java all files and save it so let me open command prompt now cd desktop and here i am writing like java c what is that method overloading dot java and here public void m1 method very nice error what is that already we discussed theoretically method m1 is already defined in method overloading class so error is pointing to which line m1 method fifth line m1 method see this fifth line m1 method this is the first line second third fourth and fifth so compiler is telling like already m1 method is there so we can't define again so if you want to define definitely we need to differentiate this method to first m1 method so let me differentiate by keeping variable like int type now java c method java so now it is successfully compiled now uh, let me use uh, let me let me take main method program or main method here so if you want to execute the program definitely what we required public static void method we required public static void main and here I am taking one variable like a string s and after that here I am creating an object what is that object method overloading method overloading mo equal to new method overloading new method overloading here I am writing like mo dot m1 mo dot m1 so in the uploading and down costing as well as in the inheritance concept I told you whenever we calling any method compiler always concentrate on reference variable type here reference variable is m1 the its a type is what your method overloading so compiler go and check m1 method within the method overloading class do you have m1 method without any value yes without any parameter yes this method will be bind and finally it is going to execute so let me execute let me compile this program yes and let me execute this method overloading and now executing what is the output zero argument method now let me call int type parameter what is that m o dot m1 of uh, some value like 1 2 3 now value like 1 2 3 now observe here java c method overloading dot java what is the problem m o dot uh, 1 2 3 yes let me save it properly java c method overloading dot java what happened semicolon expected why here missed out parenthesis nice no some small spelling mistakes java c method overloading dot java and java method overloading now observe here so again zero argument method nothing but we are using copy paste now so here we need to write int argument method now now successfully we will see output like uh, zero argument method as well as int argument method so met both the methods are executing yes we can differentiate how to differentiate one method to another method with the support of what here parameter itself so whenever we calling m1 method m1 method will executing and whatever the memory which we have in the m1 m1 method m1 reference variable that memory will coming to the m1 that we can able to hold this keyword already we learn in the previous videos and whatever the value which we have in the argument place that value will happily come and place into where here variable x how can we believe your words very simple by printing the x value we can understand now x here i am writing like what here x here good now save it and let me compile and execute the program clear the screen java c method overloading dot java now small what is that dot symbol extra here so let me delete and again compile the program so method overloading dot java and method overload now what happened we are getting the value like 1 2 3 that means this 1 2 3 happily will go and place into variable x variable good now let me take one more method what is that one more method public void public void one method like m1 here i am taking one variable like int x 
in Tx. Now, here I am writing like one small SOP statement that is that is system dot out dot println system dot out dot println here I am writing like a string argument method. Next one is system dot system dot out dot println system dot out dot println here again I am taking one variable like x. So, x is the local variable you can take the same variable within the different methods not a problem. So, Java C method overloading dot Java and Java method overloading then what happened I am successfully compile and execute, but I did not call this one how to call this one very simply m one dot m one of ram. Now, ram is successfully placed into where variable x let me compile this one Java C method overloading dot Java and Java method overloading then we are getting the output like what here ram. So, this is what exactly concept related to method overloading. Now, I want to show you some uh, ambiguity problem in this in this concept nothing but in this program very simple. Let me take control let me copy this code first good and after that here I am taking some values like values means what here here I am taking parameters like int x comma float to y. Now, here argument type is int x float argument. Now, here let me copy this one and paste here. Now, let me take this variable as y and here is also y. Now, the same program nothing but the same method I am copy and paste here. So, let me go to home and here I am writing like float y comma in t x float y comma in t x nice. Now, let me show you clarity between one method execution to another method float int argument method good. Now, let me call m 1 method. So, syntactically correct or not yes java c method overloading and java nothing problem is there, but I want to call method m 1 of 100 comma 200 m o dot m 1 of 100 comma 200. Now, now we are going to face some ambiguity problem what is that problem observe here what is that ambiguity java c method overloading dot java. So, reference to m 1 is ambiguous reference to m 1 is ambiguous. So, what is the meaning here? So, reference to m 1 is ambiguous means reference means I am pointing nothing but here I am calling m 1 method. So, in that method I am meanwhile of calling m 1 method by the programmer compiler getting some ambiguity whether whether this guy calling whether this guy calling fourth method fourth m 1 method or fifth m 1 method why compiler getting this type of ambiguity in SEO. So, I am sending 100 and 200 by default every numeric in Java language without fraction is comes under int. So, 100 is supported for what here int variable now what about the 200 200 is comes under int type we can place int type of data into where a float. So, int type of data we are placing into the float is nothing but implicit casting. So, this m 1 method is ready to execute. Now, if you compare the next m 1 method what is the value I am sending 100 100 is suitable for what float by default 100 is comes under int int value can convert it into float due to the implicit casting concept. Now, I am sending like a 200 200 is a very full fledgedly supported to what your int x. So, one method calling is ready to executing how many methods here two methods that is what compiler will getting ambiguity whether the programmer calling whether this method or this one. So, how to avoiding this ambiguity with, with the small changes how to represent the float values how to represent the float values with the help of what here f with the help of f. So, let me again print now this in this time there is no ambiguity observe 100 is sufficient for this int and the same 100 is sufficient for what here this float. Now, come to the 200 f 200 f is sufficient for or so sufficient means what here a matched with the float, but 200 f we cannot place it into the int. So, 200 f is nothing but float type float type we cannot be placed into int yes we can place with the help of explicit casting did I use any explicit casting no that means by default float data is not supported to place into variable into variable. So, in this time second method is not 
executing. So whenever we writing like 100 F and 200, 100 F is suitable for float, but it is not suitable for int. So that is what the, we can avoid this method execution, compiler can avoid that method execution. Now if you have any doubts, go through our program execution, Java C method overloading dot Java and Java method overloading, see that, see that what we getting, int float, int float argument method and float int argument method. So methods are, both the methods are executing with the small change of suffix f, ended with what here small f, suffix of f here. Now, observe guys. So, most of the uh, learners having one small confusion about the method of overloading. What is that? So, here class A and, and wide M1 method. Nice. Now, one more method is there. Int M1 method is there. Int M1 method returns some value. So, let me take some value here. Uh, return, return triple one. So, if you ask this question to freshers or who learning Java, most of the people telling like both the methods are what? Different methods. Why? They are not concentrate on parameters, they are only concentrate on, they are only concentrate on what your method return type. Here my method return type is what? Wide. And here my method return type is what here? int. So, why it is different from int? So, people speaks like, uh, you know, learners thinks like both the methods are what are different, but the method overloading is not depend upon return types. Method overloading always concentrate on parameters that is number of type of place of parameters, but not depend upon return types. So, this is one of the small confusion about the method of overloading, we can we can blindly overcome. So, whenever we talk about the loading concept, never bother about uh, return types and everything. We need to concentrate on only one thing, signature. Here, signature is nothing but what here? Method name plus parameter. Method of overloading mainly depends upon what here? Parameter. Understand? Nothing but signature here. So, I hope you enjoy this uh, theoretical and as well as uh, programming concept. In the next video, we will meet again uh, for more videos. Please subscribe to channel. Thank you.